Hi, I'm Brooke Sarson, co-owner of Catching H2O, a design-build contractor that specializes in installation of rainwater and graywater harvesting systems. In 2008, I put my electrical engineering background aside and began learning about natural systems with a focus on water harvesting. I studied permaculture design and traveled throughout places that already practice rainwater and graywater harvesting, like Australia and in Arizona. I know that these decentralized systems are an important part of drought solutions in these regions where water can be scarce at times. After studying more about California's complex water story and joining the Integrated Regional Water Management Group, or IRWM, our Regional Advisory Committee, I've become more familiar with why these solutions aren't widely practiced, encouraged, or incentivized in our region. I've made it my purpose to change that. I started by simply educating homeowners by inviting them to see working systems where thousands of gallons of rainwater were being stored rather than 55 gallon barrels, where shower and laundry gray water were being used, and where landscapes were lush and yet also water-wise because of these strategies. I've taught hundreds of hands-on classes throughout the years with thousands of students learning plumbing and landscape skills to successfully harvest water, to create spaces that are ecologically rich without drawing down imported water. I've been involved in co-crafting, collaborating, and implementing projects funded by state grant funding, including a project in the Choyas Creek watershed, where we installed systems at 50 homes in a small neighborhood area that included 420 gallon rainwater tanks, not 55 gallon barrels, laundry gray water systems, and lawn removal, replacing the landscape with fruit trees, natives, and other plantings that work with rainwater and gray water. Another project on San Diego's largest watershed, the San Luis Rey watershed, took my team and I from the ocean to the furthest reaches of the county, installing 20 gray water systems and hosting two rainwater and gray water workshops as a pilot project for a fish and wildlife grant. More recently, I've partnered with UCSD and the Public Health Alliance to study and report on how to enhance the use of decentralized water systems by using the lens of how available information and opportunities are to environmental justice communities. By enhancing the availability in these communities, we know that regulatory systems will support a more widespread adoption of these practices. We continue to install rainwater and gray water systems throughout the county in every watershed and have really experienced the beauty, complexity, and fragility of our region as climate change magnifies our region's reliance on water from faraway places. San Diego imports 80% of its water from snowmelt from the Sierras brought to us through hundreds of miles of aqueduct and pipeline and from the Colorado River at great ecological cost to the watersheds and communities of species who rely on the waters of those areas to be healthy. Meanwhile, we've paved over much of our natural landscape through urban San Diego, causing billions of gallons of rainwater to wash directly throughout our storm drains out to the ocean, polluted. Additionally, our local reservoir's ability to slow our rainwater down on its path to the ocean is limited. Most of us don't even realize what a tremendous resource we've lost after every rainfall. We can take personal responsibility to preserve and harness this precious resource and use it to benefit our communities and our local ecology. More harvested rainwater means less imported water. More harvested rainwater means we can create more resilient landscapes that will help create habitat, grow food, and cool our communities. Importantly, by creating ecologically rich landscapes, we can improve our soils, which is a top way to sequester carbon and offset the effects of climate change. It's important to know how much potential you have for harvesting rainwater and to be able to relate that to what your landscape needs are. A quick fix is not usually an ecological sound or sustainable fix. Here are three examples throughout the watershed of different solutions that can create different positive local and downstream impacts. First, at the uppermost portion of the San Diego River watershed, this home in Julian has diverted 80% of its roof line to a 5,000 gallon rainwater tank. Julian has a 28 inch per year average rainfall. That means this tank could fill over four times in an average year. This home relies on well water. At the base of this land is a pond that fills annually with water which percolates into the groundwater basin and moves downstream to meet the San Diego River. These homeowners use gravity flow from their rainwater tank to irrigate their food, trees, and supply water to their animals. 
This offsets the need to pump water from the well. Since rainwater from the tank is used in the dry periods, this provides consistent water percolating through the watershed throughout the year. If all homeowners in the upper parts of our watersheds did this, the ponds would stay full longer into the dry season, offering habitat for wildlife and water supply for homeowners. Plus, the groundwater would be replenished and wells would not have to be dug deeper as groundwater is depleted. Additionally, by capturing this rainwater, it diverts additional water from contributing to high flows in the river downstream during rain events, meaning less erosion and flooding downstream. I'm sure many of us have experienced the flooding in Mission Valley during large events. This does not prevent the local ecosystems from benefiting from its normal rain rations, since this water is being shed off an impervious roof which was constructed over land that used to be pervious. Plus, by introducing water into the system throughout the year, we have the ability to turn streams and rivers that no longer flow year-round back into perennial flows. Next, we travel down to the town of Ramona and the San Diguito watershed, which receives about 16 inches of rainfall on average each year. This one acre site experiences seasonal flooding from the local neighborhood, which consists of a trailer park and many homes with several outbuildings, such as garages, work areas, and barns, not to mention the streets. This flooding's not just an issue for this homeowner, but also for all the municipalities downstream that have to deal with this enlarged flow. Towns and watershed organizations need to continuously clean and enlarge storm drains to maintain flow. This homeowner agreed to reshape their land to harvest hundreds of thousands of gallons a year of rainwater. As the water flows through the site, it is slowed down by three large swales and a swale that connects them, which creates an overflow path for the water to an existing storm drain. Water pools in these mulch-filled swales where it is able to soak in instead of rush off site. By seeding the landscape with wildflowers and other soil building seeds and planting native and food bearing trees, the soil has improved tenfold in less than a year and the shade and wildlife habitat will continue to add benefits to this neighborhood. Finally, at the end of the Carlsbad watershed close to the ocean in Carlsbad, we have two great examples of how homes can use rainwater and gray water strategies to eliminate storm drain pollution and flooding in their neighborhoods. This helps keep our oceans cleaner, which is critical for these surfing families. Plus, by using gray water, these homes make sure this imported water is put to use more than once and are growing food for their families. Our first home was built with rainwater and gray water harvesting in mind. This family was able to incorporate smart ways to harvest as much water off their roof as possible in a 5,000 gallon tank which they proudly placed in their front yard. Carlsbad only receives about 10 inches of rainfall annually, which means this tank could still be filled four times during an average year from this roof. Because of storm drain compliance rules, they were gonna have to manage their storm water on site anyway, but now their invested dollars allow them to have a tremendous resource. Meanwhile, all the gray water from the home goes into a surge tank and is distributed through simple flood irrigation to a vegetated area in the front yard. The rainwater and gray water work together to produce food, wildlife habitat, and beauty to the residents. Meanwhile, at their neighbor's house a couple doors down, we didn't have the luxury of building water harvesting into the design since the house was already built. But retrofits are a common and necessary solution since we have so much existing infrastructure throughout the region. These homeowners are storing 3,000 gallons of rainwater, which is a small fraction of what they can capture for their veggie garden and using all their shower and laundry water to feed their existing avocado orchard. They've included some clever ways of keeping as much water on site as possible by creating large basins to catch any surface flow and overflow from the rainwater tanks. And they've added mulch and even larger woody areas, which will hold moisture moisture longer into the dry season. Mulch is an important part of these strategies since it acts like a sponge and holds water in place rather than allowing it to flow off site once the soil is saturated. Besides implementing these strategies for their own purposes, these homeowners use similar strategies with the purpose of alleviating neighborhood flooding down their street. The silt and sediment that flows from everyone's yards during moderate and large events creates a mess for anyone traveling on this road. Since they're at the top of the street, they like the idea of starting to slow the flow of water from the road using their property. So basins were created in the land adjacent to the street 
and a path to slow and spread the water using rocks, mulch, and plants was crafted. Now this area is beautiful and the neighbors have been so excited about the positive impacts of having less water flowing down the street in moderate and large events. In addition to relying on less imported or groundwater for their daily needs, homeowners around the county are slowing the flow of stormwater to the ocean during rain events and reducing the amount of water being sent off site to water treatment facilities while putting that gently used water to use to grow plants. Together, we're creating more abundance and understanding how to use our water resources more wisely. Throughout San Diego, we have diverse watersheds, settlements, and ecosystems. As our human populations continue to grow and spread, it is more important than ever that we take responsibility for our impacts on our environment. The first step is to understand what watershed you're in where your water comes from, and where your wastewater and stormwater drain to. Once you begin to understand what your impact is, you can start to consider how to minimize your negative impact by reducing how much water you're using indoors and maximizing your beneficial impact by keeping rainwater on site during rain events and planting plants that work with the gray water and rainwater available at your site. San Diego is such a special place, and we want to ensure that it is a rich place for our children and generations to come.